Hello, thank you for joining us again as we continue our study of the value of purity. If you have been with us right from the first episode, I know there's a lot that you have learned. So I have two recap questions for you. According to what we have studied, what standard of sexual purity does the Bible teach? No sex or sexual activities before or outside of marriage. Next question. What is the greatest and most valuable gift that you can present to your future husband or future wife on your wedding day? That's right, your virginity or purity. I would like to think that all of you have kept yourselves pure. But statistics tell me that some have not. For some, it may be by choice, and some, it may be because of someone else's sin. If that is the case, then I suspect that you are struggling with some of the consequences, especially guilt. Perhaps you're thinking, my life has been ruined because of my wrong choice or unfortunate experience. Can you see this paper? Do you see what is written on it? Yes, purity and virginity. Do you know that this is how God wants your life to be when you say, I do, on your wedding day? But what happens if someone engaged in sex before marriage, whether because he or she chose to do so, or because he or she was forced because of rape or sexual abuse? So when you engage in sex outside of marriage, this is what happens. Both your purity and virginity are spoiled. Let me now try to fix this paper. I'm going to use tape. Although we can now read the word virginity, it is easy to see that it has been tampered with. Premarital sex forever causes virginity to be lost. It cannot be gained again. But what about the word purity? Yes, although it too has been tampered with, it has been restored. How? Because of God's grace and forgiveness, he can restore purity. That's what our lesson today is about. Purity can be restored. As I said earlier, maybe someone watching today has lost their virginity. It can never be regained. If you lost it because of rape, defilement, or sexual abuse, you can experience God's grace and strength to move on. But our values promise today is especially for those who chose to disobey God by engaging in sex before marriage. So let's read our values promise together. Okay, let's go. If I have failed to remain pure, I will repent, accept God's forgiveness, and start afresh. We'll repeat that. If I have failed to remain pure, I will repent, accept God's forgiveness, and start afresh. What is your dream? What do you want to become in the future? In our true story today, Adam is a 30-year-old mechanic engaged in buying and selling used cars. But being a mechanic was not his dream. Adam had wanted to work in a bank, but then, he never got to finish his banking and finance course because of something he did 10 years 
I go, what went wrong? Let's rewind back in time and see what caused him to stop studying. Well, 10 years ago, Adam finished secondary or high school with acceptable grades. He was not a genius, but he was good at math. His mother died when he was six. Adam's father was an auto mechanic and barely made enough to send all three sons through school. Since it was Adam who was showing the most interest in finishing his studies, his two brothers were forced to stop studying after secondary school and get a job. Adam had dreams of working in a bank, just like their neighbor who drove his car to work every morning. Adam had planned on finishing university, then work and save up for his future for 10 years before getting married. He dreamt that by that time, he would have his own house and a car too. Diana, a classmate, had been Adam's girlfriend for almost a year. He thought she was the most beautiful girl in the world. She was part of the picture that Adam had painted in his mind. She would become his wife and the mother of their three children. Just thinking of Diana and the idea of having children with her made Adam want to be alone with her. But no, he wouldn't go all the way with her. He just wanted to be as close to her as often as he could. So after finishing secondary school, they continued their relationship. One of their friends invited both of them to a New Year's party. That night, Adam danced with Diana the whole night. Their nearness to each other caused them to make some poor choices. They engaged in sex. After that, both of them felt guilty. Diana began cursing him, screaming and blaming him for everything. Adam had never seen Diana this way before. All of a sudden, she wasn't that beautiful anymore. They went separate ways, no longer speaking to each other. Months later, after Adam was into his first year in university, he got a call from Diana. He wasn't interested in talking, but was shocked to hear her say, I am giving birth anytime, and you are the father. My family has turned their back on me, and if there was anyone else I would run to, I wouldn't be wasting my time calling you. But you are part of this problem, whether you want it or not. He didn't know what to say. This could not be happening. He was going to finish his banking and finance course. He was going to buy a house and a car. All of a sudden, everything came tumbling down. He knew he was responsible for this, and because of that one night they gave in to sin, his dreams would have to be cancelled. Adam was man enough to get Diana, bring her to his father's home, and admit his wrong. He offered to marry her, but she refused. Diana stayed in his father's house, but kept to herself. A few days after she gave birth to a baby boy, she left the baby with them and did not tell Adam where she was going. Obviously, Diana had decided to run away from the problem and guilt, but this is never possible. Seemingly, she chose to turn away from her responsibility, a different path than what our values promise represents. Let's repeat our values promise together. If I failed to remain pure, I will repent, accept God's forgiveness, and start afresh. Adam had to drop out of university and stay home to care for the child. He felt sorry for himself and for his son, but what was done was done. All he could do was to blame himself. An uncle who obviously loved God visited Adam's father, and he could tell that Adam was struggling with intense disappointment and hopelessness. Quietly, he talked to Adam and explained that if he was ready to repent and start following God's way, God was always ready to forgive. After talking with his uncle a few times, Adam cried out to God and asked forgiveness for his sin. Just as his uncle had said, he felt relief knowing that God had forgiven him just as he promised. 
The consequences remained, but the guilt was gone. Adam found a church near their home and joined the Bible study and other activities. He also asked forgiveness from his father and brothers for failing them. He went to Diana's family and asked them to forgive him as well. He wanted to ask forgiveness from Diana, but no one knew where she was. Adam learned about auto mechanics from his father. He became both father and mother to his son. He realized his mistake, he suffered its consequences, and he had to live with its outcome. But he learned that in spite of those consequences, he could still stand up from where he fell. He learned the hard way, but he could now teach this lesson to his son. Adam later met Joy when his son was in primary four. They became friends and after some time, this friendship developed into a more serious relationship. Joy knew of Adam's past and did not mind. In fact, she had grown very fond of his son. Adam was more mature and stable now and so proposed marriage to Joy and she accepted. They were married and were blessed with a daughter. Adam and Joy's two children grew to be responsible and God-fearing. Adam made one mistake that cost him his dream of his desired future. But the forgiveness of God gave him another direction. It is refreshing to know that God offers second chances to those who fall. Let us repeat our values promise. If I failed to remain pure, I will repent, accept God's forgiveness, and start afresh. Now from our lesson today, and in our story, Adam followed our values promise. He failed, yes, but he repented, accepted God's forgiveness, and started afresh. As far as we know, Diana did not. She refused to accept the consequences and abandoned her son. By now, we all know that purity is keeping my mind, my heart, and my body from anything sinful before God. Neither Adam nor Diana kept their mind, heart, and body free from sexual sin. They did not obey God or even follow our purity verse, which says, God wants you to be holy and completely free from sexual immorality. They both fell into immorality and disobeyed God's command to be holy. But still, Adam repented and received God's forgiveness. He also avoided premarital sex with joy. Did either Adam or Diana regain their virginity? No. Virginity cannot be regained since it is physical. Although God graciously gave Adam a loving wife, he nevertheless was unable to attain his original academic and financial goals. If some of you are feeling guilty due to past actions or words, I hope you will follow Adam's example and repent, seek forgiveness, and determine to start again this time, following God's instructions. For those of you who lost your virginity because of someone else's sin, God knows what happened. He will deal with that person who forced you into sex. God wants to help you move on and trust him to use that horrible experience for your good. And then for those of you who have remained pure, be wise and learn from Adam's experience. Obeying God by keeping both your purity and virginity is your wisest choice. You will have the best life with no regrets or painful consequences. Let's look into the word of God in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Are you there? Let's read. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I want us to take a closer look at this verse by asking ourselves a few questions. According to this verse, what should we do about our sins? Yes confess them. To confess means to acknowledge or admit our wrong, to sense sorrow and repent. Question number two, to whom do we confess or admit our sins to? Yes, to God. Who does the forgiving? 
Very right. It is also God. What two actions will God take if we confess our sins to him? What two actions will God take if we confess our sins to him? Yes, he will forgive and purify us from all unrighteousness. Forgiveness means to treat someone as if he has done no wrong. If you, like Adam, chose impurity but you are ready to change your ways and start afresh, do what this verse is talking about. Admit your sin to God. Ask for forgiveness from God and from those you have hurt and ask God for help to do what is right from now on. Let's repeat our values promise. If I've failed to remain pure, I will repent, accept God's forgiveness, and start afresh. It is that time again. The Purity Song from our awesome friends. By the way, it has all our values, promise says. Please enjoy. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that song. Well, everyone is tempted to do wrong, but with God's help, we can say no. However, if someone yielded to temptation and sinned, the good news is that they can rise up from that fall. True, some consequences are irreversible and the person will have to live with them for the rest of their lives. But there is forgiveness from God to those who are willing to repent and stop sinning against God. Purity can be restored. Can I get an amen? All right. Humble yourselves and let's close in in prayer. So you can repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, please help me remain pure so that I can enjoy life as you planned for me. If I have sinned and become impure, Help me not to blame you or others for the painful results, but to repent, ask for your forgiveness, and start afresh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for joining our class today, and may God bless you.